So imagine you're climbing this hill. It's quite a steep ascent. You've been on it for quite a while. And you've had a few issues along the way. The mud has been making you slip and slide all over the place. But nevertheless, you've almost reached the top. You're 95% of the way there. You can see the peak from where you're standing. But as you reach that point, you decide instead of going over the top and descending that way, you're going to turn around and walk back down the way you came. That's how I feel the Tudor Ranger has positioned itself at the moment, where the groundwork has all been laid out. This watch is established, it's ready to go. It's just missing that 5% to push it to legendary status. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's no secret that the Tudor Ranger release is one of the most disappointing releases I have in recent memory. Because I'd been talking about this watch for years. I'd come up with so many renders, so many ideas and concepts of where it could go. How it could call back to its vast range of designs in the past and create something that's modern. Something as an everyday wearer for anyone to enjoy. The resulting watch that we got in 39mm left a bit to be desired. Now, by no means am I saying it's an awful watch. It's a very good watch, very well priced. In fact, it's one of the most affordable watches that Tudor now offers. It was an exercise to reproduce a watch that wasn't as successful in its 41 millimeter size. This one, a little bit smaller in scale, that referenced the legendary 7991 with the single line of text and the shield logo. And when you take a step back and you look at this watch entirely, you look at the case, you look at the finishing, the fact that this watch is almost entirely brushed. You look to the bracelet, the new micro adjusting system. The watch now lacks rivets on its bracelet and on the whole, it's a very pleasing presentation. But when you see this watch side by side with a 39 millimeter Explorer, or when you see it next to a 36 millimeter Explorer, or even its original 34 millimeter counterpart, this watch does leave something to be desired. Going to go on a little tangent and it'll all make sense in a moment. In the design world, when it comes to sketching a product, there's a term that we use called tightening up the drawing or the sketch. And what it means is to get rid of the construction lines, to emphasize the points that you really want to be seen, like to add more definition on the edges, to add a bit of shading, a bit of contrast, making it more three-dimensional. And in the watch world, when I look to this 39mm Ranger, I feel the expression should be used the same. It's a piece that deserves to be tightened up. What do I mean by this? On my wrist today, a watch that you're quite accustomed to seeing, the Smith's Everest 36mm. It's a great watch, great everyday wearer. What I also have next to me is this. Not a Tudor Black Bay 36, it's a Black Bay 32. It's a gift I bought for someone very special to me. I would absolutely put it on if I could fit it over my hand. Now there is a lot of talk about the Black Bay 36 for all the right reasons. It's an excellent watch, a great daily wearer. Not much spoken about the 32mm. I think largely because it's seen to be a woman's watch and not one that a male could really wear. But I have to say that this watch has surprised me in so many ways. Better than the Black Bay 58. And it has to do with tightening up. It's the fact that this watch took all of the same proportions of the 36 brought it down in size and scale. And you can see that this watch executes its design, its presentation just flawlessly. A small bracelet with an elegant taper, no rivets. A case bezel lug integration that feels appropriate. And a dial and handset that comes across so nicely proportioned, you can see it from across the room. Bear in mind that these are the same plots used on the Black Bay 36 and the Black Bay 41. All that's happened is that these plots have been put on a smaller dial. When I look at this watch, when it's in my hand, the first thing that comes to mind is not critiquing the handset, it's not critiquing the proportions and scale on the dial. It's considering that this is the very definition of what it means to tighten up the design of a watch. And the fact that Tudor has done this as recently as 2019 with the Black Bay 32, there is nothing stopping them from doing the same thing with the Ranger. And I believe that this is absolutely going to be the case very soon. And now we can get to talking about the 39 versus 36 millimeter case debacle. It's always going to be a subject that we debate. We're always going to have our own opinions. On a day-to-day -day basis, my daily wearing watches range from 39 to 42 millimeters, but there is an occasion, something like a Sunday, a rare occasion where I'll want to wear a 36 or 35 millimeter watch because it does offer you something different. And the real irony is when you're wearing a smaller than average watch, it feels far more considered than its bigger counterparts. It feels like more effort and a greater decision went to the places that are most important. Now, before we talk about bringing the scale of the Ranger down, 
the elephant in the room is that Rolex now makes a 36 millimeter Explorer and the 39 millimeter Ranger was aimed at being the alternative to a 36 mil Explorer. For those who want a larger sized watch with this kind of configuration, from a business standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. You don't want one watch crowding the other. And I do believe that if this Ranger was brought down in size, it may even beat the Explorer when it comes to sales. But regardless of that though, these are two very different watches. I mean, the origins of the Ranger, it's as simple as saying, well, they wanted a more affordable Explorer. That's the extent of this watch's history. The North Greenland expedition, it was more of a test platform to see the effectiveness of a Tudor watch out in those temperatures. And this happened a year before the Everest expedition. So from the get-go, the Tudor watch was the actual testing platform. But the reality is the Ranger has always been that goofy cousin, that alternative to the Explorer that's never been as good, using a generic ETA-based movement, some of which even hand-wound. Now, I know this watch doesn't appeal to everyone, from the strange numerals on the dial to the handset. And no matter what changes, this watch might never appeal to that person. So the ultimate goal, at least my vision for this watch, would be to bring it down to 36 millimeters, but do it in such a way that it still holds everything that they've established with the 39 model, while at the same time introducing a point of difference where its likeness cannot be fully compared to the 36mm Rolex Explorer. These two watches need to remain leagues apart. Now the reference I've been looking at and really fallen for is the 7966-0, some would cite as being the best Tudor Ranger ever produced. Now this watch was 34mm in diameter, it had a 19mm lug width, and had a cyclops and a date window. So like I said in the beginning of the video, 95% of the groundwork has already been done. Bring the watch down to 36 millimeters in diameter. One of my primary adjustments that I think goes without saying is to remove the green yellow hue loom on the dial and stick with white. This aids in the watch's contrast, it looks far more professional. And while everything is brought down in scale from the handset to the numerals on the dial, you include a date window at the three o'clock position. There is something about the asymmetry of how this watch presents that's fascinating. And I think blending the best of both worlds, having quite an averagely sized small watch that someone could wear every single day, as well as the fact that they have the added date complication, fully automatic movement, a watch that's bulletproof in construction, it's a winning formula. If you want to go against the brief a bit, you can remove the date window and add a smiling self-winding underneath the range of text. This is not exactly period correct because the smiling text was always used if it was an ETA-based caliber. But through this process of bringing the watch down in scale, through this process of making it look far more considered by decreasing the amount of negative space on the dial, the way it presents to the wearer, it'll harken back closer to the historic references of the past but give you something that looks infinitely more modern and more usable for a lot more wrists. That's why I feel with a watch like this, the Black Bay 32, Tudor absolutely nailed it. And this kind of watch could be the reference they use for the further development of the Ranger collection. I will beat on the drum until the very end that I believe the Ranger deserves far more attention. And in its current state, it is one step away from being a perfect daily wearer. This kind of watch has the same potential as the Black Bay 58. And when this piece is executed correctly, third time's the charm, the Ranger will turn many heads. That's really the issue of being a designer is that you see the potential where others might not. And all you can really do is share your ideas, your concepts, present them. Then it has to go through many different channels before it's either approved or denied. This watch has that capability of being one of the best daily wearing watches ever made. And it's so close. It is so close to being there. This Black Bay 32, when I got it in hand, it immediately inspired me to talk about the Ranger and consider that that watch deserves more, deserves better. And the fact that the Tudor has done this, presented a Black Bay in this way, they have the ability to do it. And I think it's just a matter of time until we see it done.